Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And with this video, I'd like to request you to be a bit careful when it comes to image augmentation. In fact, I want you to be on the conservative side when it comes to image augmentation. What does that, well, that mean? Well, when you're doing image augmentation, again, it depends upon the type of task, especially for semantic segmentation, you gotta be very careful in terms of uh, matching up your masks and images, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Uh, if you're aggressive, for example, if you change your brightness too much, if you zoom in too much, or if you rotate too much, or if you fill it with something that uh, doesn't reflect the challenge uh, that you're trying to solve, then the then your accuracy gets actually hurt pretty much, pretty badly. So let's uh, see this on a standard like CIFAR 10 dataset because it's very relatable and it's accessible. The data is accessible to all of you. So I wrote a few lines of code on Python notebook, uh, in fact, on Google Colab. So let's jump on and then see exactly what I mean by being conservative. So uh, here's the notebook. Again, uh, I'm using CIFAR 10 dataset. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this. If not, it's basically 60,000 images, 50,000 for training, 10 for uh, testing or validation, if you want to call that. And each image is a 32 by 32 pixel image, and there are 10 classes in here. Okay, and these are the classes. So let's go ahead and start importing our libraries. Again, uh, getting this, in fact, let me go ahead and restart the runtime. Not sure if I did that before, sorry about that. And change the runtime GPU. Yeah, GPU is always good because why not? Okay, so let's import the libraries and let's import the training data. And this should be 50,000 training images and 10,000 uh, testing images or validation images. Of those, because I really want to speed up this video, I'm just only taking 0.1 percentage of data points for further, uh, further training which is total 5,000. So 5,000, let's off 5,000, let's assign 25% to uh, validation or training or testing. So our data size right now is 3,750 for training and the remaining for uh, testing, 1,250 for testing. So if you just look at a few of these images, you will see, okay, there are all of these like a frog, I guess, over there and a ship and an airplane. And let's divide our pixel values by 255. So instead of zero to 255, we have values between zero to one, okay? And uh, now let's uh, categorical encode. This is multi-class classification and let's define our model. I'm dropping out 50% just to generalize this. You can try other dropouts. And again, this, the model itself and your augmentation, they're all related. Always check your augmentation on smaller data sets before you actually uh, waste your time training a model for two, three days or something, okay? That's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So I say, okay, this is my model. And with this model, I'd like to train. So if you don't, if you if you just no augmentation, right? Right now, I'm just doing training without any augmentation. So let's go ahead and do that. This should be pretty fast. I'm doing 25 epochs. Why am I doing that? So we can establish a baseline. Without any augmentation, what type of accuracy can we actually expect? And does augmentation help? And if I go towards the aggressive side of augmentation, does it actually hurt, right? So this should be done. Yeah, there you go, it's done. And now let's go down all the way and print out the accuracy. It's 39.35. So let's note that down. No augmentation, 39.36, let's say, okay? So without augmentation. Now let's see if augmentation actually helps uh, a little bit. So I'll get to talking about the few lines in a minute, but let's make sure we do the basics here. Let me kill this and comment out my regular training there. Okay, so how are we doing augmentation right now? Uh, I'm using Keras's image data generator with these uh, parameters. Okay, rotation zero to 15 degrees. We'll try zero to 45 degrees in a minute, okay? Zero to 15 with shift 0 0.1, like only 10% shift and height, 10% height shift, and zoom, 10% zoom in. Vertical flip, I'm not flipping these vertical, but I'm flipping this in a horizontal way, and uh, whenever a new space is created, meaning if we rotate, there is some blank space, fill that with reflect, which means it's reflecting to the you know actual image. Okay, and that's it. I mean, and in each batch, we are creating 32 images, so let's, uh, Restart. First, let me run this line so you can see the uh, effect of this, which means uh, each batch we are creating 32 images, each image 32 by 32 by 3, right, of X. 
and for y we are doing 32 by 10 10 is or 10 classes that's it once i have my train generator in fact you can also have validation generator if you would like i am uh, let's go ahead and look at a few images okay these are the ones that are processed and there is some zoom there is some shift and you know you don't notice any black space right now because we are uh, we are filling it with reflect okay if you just say constant or something then you'll see blank space wherever there is a shift or rotation i bet most of you know what i'm talking about uh, go ahead and experiment with that okay so the generator is working fine so now we can go ahead and train it well i don't want uh, to train without restarting the kernel so let's go ahead and restart and run all uh, if you don't do that if you don't restart then it's going to start off with the with the weights from the previous training because our model name is the same right so we have to be a bit careful when you're comparing things this is how this is how you would like to uh, start off with okay so now uh, i'm training here again model.fit if you are using older version of tensorflow or keras then this would be model.fit generator okay so the latest one model.fit is fine and i'm supplying my train generator and i'm doing my uh, 117 steps per epoch and so on uh, so now ideally we should see we should see a uh, accuracy hopefully better than 39.36 if so my augmentation is okay it's working well remember augmentation is not about creating a lot of data if you have like 1000 images with augmentation you cannot just create 10000 images or even 2000 images you are creating exactly 1000 images but that are transformed. So every epoch, it's giving a different uh, representation of the same image, slightly rotated, slightly, you know, uh, different ways. So, uh, so don't be under the impression that, oh, I have 500 images, I'm good to go, I can augment my way out, no. Okay, it generalizes the problem a little bit and improves the accuracy a little bit, but the, it's not like uh, having a lot of uh, training data. Okay, so with the uh, augmentation, we have 43.28. That's not bad, right? I mean, that's better. 43.28 uh, percent. So now already you can see like about three to four uh, percent difference right there, right? In in terms of accuracy. Okay, let's go a bit aggressive on augmentation. So let's come back here and instead of 15, let's actually say I want to do 45. And instead of ch changing a lot of variables, you can actually change only the rotation and see how the effect is. But just to make this video a bit short, I'm just changing these to 0.3, 0.3, 0 0.3. Let's also do vertical flip. If you do too many operations and if the if that augmentation doesn't reflect the actual actual uh, validation data, then uh, the, it, it, you can run into some issues. Uh, uh, not uh, the actual data, let me put it that way. Valid uh, there is a reason why I'm not using generator for validation. Uh, if you use a generator for validation, the error may get even worse. Again, I'll leave that to you, but I just want to warn you for now. Let's restart and run all. Okay. So, and, and the reason primarily is if you rotate this by 45 degrees, there is a lot of blank space and you're filling that blank space by reflect. So you're filling it with some information. If you're not filling it with anything, then you're still filling it with black pixels. So you're doing something to these images, which makes it, uh, you know, uh, which makes this a bit uh, challenging uh, to converge. So let's, uh, once this is done, let's actually uh, have a quick look at uh, the accuracy and uh, uh, again, <laughs> The whole point of this video is don't be aggressive. So I'm I'm expecting a value below 43 for sure. But is it below 39? I don't know. I haven't done this no augmentation test before. So let's go ahead and do that. While that's doing it, in fact, I did, uh, uh, I did uh, multiple runs where I did uh, 1,000 images, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 25, and 50,000, right? 50,000 is the size of my data set. So I trained using a smaller to bigger data sets and you can see how the accuracy in general improves but accuracy with augmentation also improved so if i go down uh, actually we'll generate a plot in a second oh there you go so if you look at this you see how without augmentation the accuracy is improving with augmentation the accuracy is improving but with augmentation you have much better higher accuracy compared to without and uh, the gap between these two again if you can optimize the augmentation the right way you can increase the gap between these two meaning you can actually get even better augment you know accuracy if you're careful with the way you design your augmentation so in summary 
it's not like you can just throw anything and then you get like uh, any augmentation routines and you get a great answer. In fact, is this done? Yeah. So now let's look at the accuracy. It's 21.28. So the accuracy right now is 21.28%. This is absolutely horrible compared to actually having no augmentation at all, even with 1000 images or how many ever we used. Yeah, I think 5000 images. So I hope you got the point here. I think uh, you can go, I'm not even doing anything too aggressive here. All I'm trying to do here is just change the rotation range and then my shift range to like from 0.1 to 0.3 and all of these from 0.1 to 0.3, which is pretty logical. It sounds logical, but when you apply this, you see that the result is extremely horrible. So augmentation is one other thing where you need to tune your hyperparameters here not everything works well all the time so i probably this is general knowledge uh, to all of you but i hope at least you uh, for those of you who didn't know this now at least you know that you should be careful when you do augmentation always use augmentation i mean it, it's actually beneficial even if you have lots of data but be careful you have to tune it you have to make sure that this is the right augmentation for the type of task you're doing whether it is semantic segmentation or classification like here or even like some sort of object detection well another tip right here so i hope uh, you learned something new again subscribe so you get these tips delivered to you thank you